Welcome to this painting demonstration. My name is Ryan Fox, rfoxphoto.com, and the subject matter today is the Lincoln Monument up in Washington, D.C., a photograph I shot a few years ago. And the technique I'm going to be using today is called pouring watercolor. So what you do is you mask off areas of your paper with liquid mask, and once it's dried, you literally just dump color on top. I like to call these things my nester pieces because they make a huge mess. You'll see as we go throughout this process here the mess it does make, but the beautiful qualities that pouring water color does give you. First step is to get the paper wet. Make sure the water goes everywhere. Because we want the paint to go everywhere. And then this is going to make a huge mess. You'll see this is what happens here. Alright, I've got a lot of water on it. Now, I usually start with my yellows first. And literally just squirt it on. Now it's musical montage time. Dun dun da 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 dun Ugh, I'm running out of breath here, people. I can't do this very long. Clean up on all four. And keep moving stuff around. More water. Mix in the color. I'm not going to do it again, I promise you. More color. More movement. It's like cooking. You just add salt to everything. It makes it taste better, right? Especially if you burn it. And you just keep going until you think it doesn't look bad. Sometimes it looks good. The first stage is dried. We applied masking fluid. Kind of hard to see at this point. This is Lucas masking fluid, so it has a slight yellow color look coloring to it. But you can see this is where I first applied masking fluid. This is the second area is where I protected last night. It took me about a couple hours to put this much masking right, fluid. So down. this has been slowly drawing on I me. Mean, I've noticed I have some issues here. I went back in and added a little bit of yellow over here, a little bit of yellow into here. But then the problem with adding yellow into this is that I dumped a lot more water on top of it. Now, if it's wetter, the water you put down on top is wetter. It's going to create a collar flower. Then what's down there already? So you see, there's a big pool of water here. This kind of has the same uniform wetness across the whole surface, so it's not going to create a cauliflower or a firework or a, a blossom, whatever you want to call it. But this area is because there's just a big area of water right in the center and not on the edges. So if I wanted to get some more yellow into this, you know, I can squirt it and then I'm just going to have to run it off. Take a look at it then, and now it looks about the same uniform wetness all across, so it shouldn't create any uh, watermarks on me here. So I'm going to continue to let this dry. This is the second stage after it's been dried. You, know, you can see it lightened up significantly for about 15 to 20 percent or so. See how this is getting darker now, so that, that blue was bothering me before. It's not bothering me as much now. And so the next step is to go into here and mask off the next layer's areas. I haven't done any more masking because I realized there was a problem. I was looking at the values between this layer and this layer, which is still unprotected, and I realized that they're too close to each other. So it's like it's not going to work if they're too close to each other unless I'm doing 15 to 16 pours. And on this one, I'm only planning on doing about four different stages. There needs to be a significant difference in the values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more red on top of this, mainly red with a little bit more yellow occasionally, just to make this area darker so that this will stand out against the darkest darks when I'm done. Because there's really only two more pores left. This should be the next, the darkest value. This is still too light. So I'm just going to spray this down again really quickly. And at this point in time, it's going to be mostly red that I put on here. See how much paint you go through with painting this size. These, I believe, are five ounce bottles. They don't last that long. Yellow, a couple areas. I'm gonna have to re 
fill this red next time I do a pour here. Okay. And I don't want too much of the paint to run off this time. I don't want the dark. So I'm intentionally trying to not wet enough. The paint doesn't move, it's because it's not wet enough. sure I get everything covered. Just run my fingers in areas that I might have missed. It really can be hard to tell sometimes where the masking fluid is applied and where it isn't. Okay. Clean up and then I'm going to let that sit. Here the last pour has dried. This looks a lot better. This is the value I'm looking for. It's dark enough. There's definitely a difference between this value and that value. So the next pour is probably going to be the darkest of all. Uh, you'll see this in a few minutes after I'm done. Uh, doing all the masking, which you're not going to watch, of course, because it's very boring. Of course, once it was dried, I masked off everything that I want to preserve for the next layer. Now, if you look at the sheen on top of the surface, almost everything at this point in time is covered with masking fluid. This area is in a few areas of the hand, a few details in uh, the darkest shadows and here and here. I don't know if you can see the difference in the camera or not, but I had to switch masking fluid. I ran out of one of them. So one of the types, the graphics, is much shinier than the other type. The uh, the PED, or actually the Lucas masking fluid, which is down here, you can barely even tell this stuff is on here right now, which is one of the reasons why I like the graphics, because this thing is very shiny, very reflective. It just screams to you, this is where your masking fluid is. The other stuff is a little bit harder to see. Uh, it doesn't, it's not very shiny or anything, but it's all, um, but the thing about the Lucas I like a lot is that it dries very quickly, as opposed to the graphics. Anyway, so now we're going to start with the, get, just get the darkest darks in here and see what happens. I'm going to start probably with my blue, which is over there. And maybe a little bit of indigo. Let's see where this goes. Now, I have not used indigo yet in this process. I only use that like the darkest darks at the very, very end. Kind of a nasty color. It's a mixture of three or four other colors. You could make it yourself if you wanted to. And start by getting the surface again a little bit wet, like we always do. I mean, it is really hard to tell what I've covered and haven't covered at this point in time. I know this area doesn't have some color yet. Somewhere in here needs something. So now it's time for a second musical montage. I'm lying, I'm not going to sing, but if I did, it'd be Def Leppard's Pour Some Sugar On Me. That'd be very appropriate. We'll go back and add some of the, uh, the rose matter. Stream down here a little bit. Not rose matter, I'm sorry, the brown matter. I keep saying the wrong name for that. sure we've hit all the areas and you know I don't worry about it too much at this point there will be areas that will be missed and we can make up for that afterwards when we take off all the masking fluid and start going over it with some glazing now it's time to remove all the masking fluid and this is your moment of either ultimate triumph or epic failure and I took the masking fluid off this piece and I was actually pretty happy with it. I mean, I liked how I alternated the warm versus cools on different layers of pouring. Uh, when you pour watercolor, it just retains this amazing transparency. And that's one of the things I think is fantastic about this technique. Looking at the painting, I had to do a little bit more work of glazing, darken down the corners. I had to lighten up the pedestal at the bottom of his feet. But in the end, I think it was a pretty successful painting. 
Hope you guys enjoyed today's painting demonstration of watercolor pouring. I'll have some more videos in the future. Again, my name is Ryan Fox. You can check out more of my work at rfoxphoto.com or my Etsy shop at rfox watercolors. Thanks a lot. Happy painting. Pour some sugar on me.